Hello, welcome to your first lecture of Physics 150, General Physics 1, now online. Um, yeah, welcome to class. Good number of you are here. Um, I'm going to be honest, today is not the world's most interesting class. We're not going to really give over much today other than syllabus bullshit and just how the class is going to work. Really, chapter one isn't really physics yet. Physics doesn't really start with chapter two. Um, but I just got to make sure everyone's on the same page. So in general, um, yep, yeah, this is where you're at. Uh, welcome to physics. Um, here is some information. This is all on Vanco Hall, including my email, the Zoom room, and the YouTube page. Um, in general, I'm going to say this right away. Um, I mentioned before in the email, and it's in the notes later on, but I want to state it right from the get-go. This class is both synchronous and asynchronous, your choice. So those of you who are watching it live in Zoom, welcome. Those of you who are watching this on YouTube, welcome to you also. Um, if you're watching this in person live, though, feel free to interact as much as you want. If, you, if I'm going too fast, you have any questions, you have any comments, or just want to say something, feel free to unmute yourself and talk to me. Don't worry about interrupting me. Feel free to talk. I also keep the chat open. So if you type anything in the chat, I will see it eventually. I don't always notice things in the chat right away. But if you put it, if you have a question about what I'm covering, type it in the chat. I'll respond that way too. But if you're watching the class live, feel free to interrupt, ask questions, and so on. Um, if you're watching it not live, you, it, that doesn't work. But you know, cool. Um, I will, oops, that was interesting. I accidentally clicked the link to open my Zoom instead of going to the next slide. Um, about me, I am your instructor. My name is Dr. Lars Schweidenbach. No one uses my last name because it is long, frightening, scary, and big. Everyone just calls me by my first name. Um, if you want to be formal, you can call me Dr. Lars, but Lars is fine. Um, with my name, it comes up that uh, my name is pronounced how it's spelled, not how I say it. I do have a speech impediment. It is a slight misshaping of my mouth, and I cannot pronounce the letter all, which is awesome when it's in your first name. Also, if you're in my wife's first name, life sucks. Um, that being said, if I ever say something and you can't understand me because of my speech impediment, feel free to ask me to like spell it out or say something else. I can write right on the screen. I also have a dot cam so I can like write things down, make sure up on the screen. Um, I I will gladly try to explain what I'm saying. Now, by nature, I am a physicist. I have a BS and eventually a PhD in physics. Um, I've been teaching this class at SUNY Delhi since 2013. So yeah, that's a thing that I've been doing for way too long. Um, though this is only my second full semester with it online and the you know last half of last spring, last semester and now. Um, this class is 100% online, which is crap. Um, I'm an in-person teacher. I'm usually very active. I don't sit still well, and I'm just sitting in a chair, so that's all fun. Um, labs really should be done in person. But, you know, pandemic, so this is the world we live in. Um, everything is completely online. Um, you will probably, you won't see me at all in person this semester. Um, it's all going to be like this. Um, I will say, I, I said before, lectures, you all I recommend coming to them live so you can interact. But if you want, if you or if you can't make it or just don't want to make it, all of the lectures will be on YouTube. What's going to happen is if well, I lost my mouse, is if you go to the Vanco Hall page, there will be you know a few things at the top, the syllabus, office hours, and things which I'll come back to soon. But after that will be the lecture notes. I'll always have the chapter work. I always have whatever chapter we're on. And what will be right, right here, this coming soon, will become a link. That I'll put the link to the YouTube videos right on the site. It's of note, most chapters, there's only two exceptions. Um, okay, I'm gonna cover a chapter a week. And normally it's gonna be Monday start a chapter, Wednesday finish a chapter, Friday is example problems. Um, the videos for those example problems will actually be down lower 
in the example problem section, which isn't visible yet because you, you don't have any up yet. Um, you know what? Screw it. Do, do, do. Now you can see everything I can see. Down here, there is a, wait, did I go past it? Homework, example problem. This example problem section, the videos will show up there when I do example problems. Um, so you can go and see the videos. Um, so yeah, videos will go right there. You can watch them that way. I don't care which way you watch them. Um, I will demand that you're there in person at the live times of noon for exams. Um, I'll talk about that more when I talk about exams. But other than that, you can do it live or you can do it or you can, you know, do it asynchronous, whatever you want to do. Just make sure you're watching it one way or the other. If you don't get the material at all, you're probably not going to pass. Now, this is admittedly not the easiest class in the world, um, but I try to cover for that by giving a ton of office hours. I am more than willing to help as much as you need. I have many, many hours of office hours each week. They're printed here, but also on Vanco Hall. I have them in list form and in, you know, picture form. Um, anytime you need help, just come to my office hours. You don't need to sign up. You don't need to worry about stallfish. I don't, I'm not even barely gonna look at that. If you, if you wanna come to my office hours, just log on to this Zoom room and I will be here and I will help you with whatever you need. For the most part for office hours, I'll just work on the dot cam so I can sit here and work out problems for you right on the screen. Um, but yeah, those are my hours. Um, if you can't make any of those times, I am willing to do office hours by appointment. You just got to email me and tell me you want me to be there and I can log into Zoom. Um, obviously, I won't always guarantee if you tell me a time I would do it. Um, I normally kind of don't willingly meet people in this like small gap I have here so I can eat lunch um, and I only go so late in the day but let me know if you want to meet with me outside those hours and we can do it good so far gotcha. yeah Boring okay. syllabus stuff <sighs> grading um grade of the class this is the setup 50% of your grade is exams 25% is homework 25% is labs that's the only three things I'm grading of note, I drop your lowest homework and I drop your lowest lab. I use the Vanco Hall gradebook. So if you go in there, your grade will always be up to date and say exactly what your grade is in the class at that moment. Um, it automatically drops the lowest homework and lab. Was that a question or someone just thought I heard something? All right. Um, to split up further, your exams is actually spread out between three exams. There is two exams during the semester. Um, exam one covers the first four chapters. Exam two covers the next four chapters. And your final exam, which is half of your exam score or 25% of the class. So that is the full breakdown for your grade. Um, of note, homework and labs together are half your grade. And I have, once again, a ton of office hours. I will happily help walk you through step by step your homeworks and labs if you want to do that, which means there's no reason you shouldn't be getting good scores on homeworks and labs. If you're getting low grades on homeworks and labs, that means you just need to come get help and you should, which means it should be pretty hard to fail this class. If you have 100% on homeworks and labs, you pass the class if you get a 20% average on exams. Come get help as needed. I will, as I said, if you're not getting good scores in homeworks and labs, come get help. I will help you as much as you're willing to get helped. That sounds weird. I want to make sure you pass. Lots of home, uh, office hours for a reason. Now, um, this class does not have a textbook because textbooks are stupidly expensive. I just saw a thing that with COVID and so many colleges online, on average, online textbooks went up 500% because more people were doing online teaching. Because yeah, that's cool. I, I want to make this class free. So there is no textbook. If you want a textbook, some people want one. This is the one I would recommend. Um, 
but there was no need to buy it. In fact, I would recommend not buying it. My notes will have everything. I've made sure of it, but for those who want it. Okay, so I said before, three things being great, exams, homeworks, labs. So I'm going to talk about those today. Homework is what I'm going to start. Homework is on Vanco Hall and is due at 11 p.m. on Wednesdays. General idea is I'm going to do a chapter per week. Uh, there is no homework due today, or sorry, due this Wednesday, because I haven't finished the chapter, but it will be the following week. So this week, I'll cover chapter one. The homework for chapter one will be due the following week on the 10th, and so on, at 11 p.m. The homework can be found on Vanco Hall just by going down to the homework section. They are all visible and explicitly said when they are due for each one. When you go in, you just get a series of problems. It'll always give 10 problems. The thing is sometimes homework has parts A, B, C, and so on. Um, and so there was 10 pages of problems. You may look at this and say there's 12 here, but I'm saying this 10, 11, 12 are all part of the same problem. There will always be 10 pages of problems. And what it is when you go in is you have four attempts on each one. You read the problem, do it, type in the answer, hit check, and it will tell you if it's right or wrong. If it's wrong, hit try again, try to do it, type in the new answer, and it will tell you if it's wrong, right or wrong. On each problem, you have four attempts. That means you can get type it in, get it wrong, try again, get it wrong, try again, get it wrong, try again, get it wrong, get it right, full credit. I do not take off any points for each wrong attempt until the fourth one. What I highly recommend is try to do the homework on your own. And if you get it wrong one time or even two times, oh yeah, maybe one time, but definitely get it wrong like twice, come to my office hours, come get help. We'll figure out what you're doing wrong. You have four attempts to make sure you can get it. Uh, that would be each problem individually with those four tries. Also, you can start and stop the homework at will. So I can, you can go work on problem, the first few problems, say I'm out of time, I have to leave, and just walk away from the page and it will keep going. There's no time limit until the due date. And so, yeah, you can start and stop however you want. Sound good so far? Yeah, sounds good. Um, each blank on the homework is going to be worth one point, and there's 10 pages of questions a week. I already said that, and I already said the four attempts. In fact, there was no new information on this slide. So here's a slide that doesn't say anything I haven't said before. I am very good at my job. Now. That being said, Vanco Hall is grading your homework. It grades it by a percent variance for the numbers. If you think Vanco Hall messed up, let me know. I wrote all of these things into Vanco Hall, and half the problems in your homework are ones I wrote. It's very likely those mistakes. Every semester, I add a few new problems, and so I might have made a mistake somewhere. Let me know. I, I, am, not, oh, I am not against overriding your grade if, it's, if something happened. Also, if you need an extension, let me know. I will say I'm much more likely to give extensions if you let me know before it was due. Like if you email me Tuesday and say, I can't get the homework done on Wednesday because, you know, a tree fell in the snow on top of my car and I have to go deal with that. I'm just making shit up. I'll probably give you an extension. That being said, homework is due 11 p.m. on Wednesdays. When I get emails at 10.50 saying, shit, I haven't started the homework yet. Can you give me an extension? I'm normally going to be like, no, start your homework earlier. But there's always exceptions. Feel free to talk to me, but I will give extensions if you have reasons. Also, I like to put old exam problems on the homework. A good portion of your homework problems will be old exam problems. And so if you can do the homework, you can do the exams. Um, by nature, you can normally tell every homework problem that is an old exam problem, because if it is about movies, video games, or comic books, because if you ha can't tell, looking, I have a thing for comic books, 
If it's about movies, video games, or comic books, it's probably a pro old exam problem. All the old exam problems are nerdy references to things. Um, you can um, the manga's downstairs in a different room. No manga up here. Oh no, there's some manga up there. Sorry, someone in the chat. Uh, my wife has more of the manga than I do. I have solely the appeal. And Death Note. Um, so yeah, you're well. If you see a, something with a pop culture reference, it's probably an old exam problem. Also of note, I didn't say this before. Um, whenever you get a problem right on the homework, a meme or a GIF will show up. If you ever get a meme or a GIF and it still marks it wrong. That means that your solution is correct, your number is correct, your units is wrong. I'll say that again later on when we get further in. I do ask you um, don't save your homework to the last minute. Uh, that way, if you need help, you can get it. You know, you, if you don't know how to work out a problem and you're finding this out at 1045 and you email me, I might respond to the email fast enough. I might not. It depends on literally what video game I'm playing and how quickly, how into it and how quickly I notice. Um, I do a lot of gaming in the evening. Um, so if you need help, if you, yeah, if you save it the last minute, you might not be able to get help. I do do homework help via email, um, but I would prefer to come to office hours or make an appointment and do it then. Any questions on homework? I'll stop playing with that. This is the most I've talked in so long, basically since the semester ended. Okay, exams. Three exams. Friday, March 5th at 2. Friday, April 9th at 2. Um, sorry, there was a question in the chat. Can we go ahead if we finish current homework assignments? Yeah. Um, every single homework assignment is completely open. You can theoretically do every single assignment for the semester if you want. I don't recommend it because you don't know the material, but you can jump ahead whenever you want. All right, exams. So three exams, um, March 5th, April 9th, and whatever the hell they put the final. Um, exam one will cover the first four chapters. Exam two will cover the next four chapters. And the final covers all the things stressing the last four chapters. General idea is that it is still online. The exams are going to show up in Vanco Hall down here in the exam section, where it'll say explicitly when they open and close. Uh, they will also eventually will show up last semester's exams. So you can see them and see how they work. Um, how it's going to work is I grade heavily on partial credit. In a good physics problem, there is a lot of process to solve, and it's very easy to make silly mistakes, like a 23 becomes a 32. So normally on any given problem, the final answer is worth very few points. Exam 1 and Exam 2 each will have on four questions long. Exam 1 is four questions. Exam 2 is four questions. Exam The final exam is nine that you have to do eight of. Each question is worth 25 points. The final answer is normally worth two or three out of 25. I want to see all your work, and that's what I grade. What that means is how the exams are going to work is you're going to open them up, and you're going to do the exams on paper by hand, take photos, and upload it. What I'm going to do is the exams are 50 minutes long. However, I'm going to give you 65 minutes to do them. The logic is it's 50 minutes to take the exam and 15 minutes to take pictures of your work and upload it. And the final has more time, but we'll talk about the final we approach to the final. Uh, that's going to be the setup. As I said, I'm going to put up last semester's exams. Um, Eventually, I don't know why I don't have them up yet. I guess I just didn't bother. Um, but they will show up eventually, and you can see the process there as we approach. If you cannot make the final at these times, um, you're going to need to let me know. I'm willing to work things out, but you got to tell me ahead. If you miss the final, you get a zero. Because, you know, you work yourself out with me. Uh, the exam. Sorry, I missed the final. I might say miss the exam. Yeah, if you miss the exam, you get a zero. But in general, the exams, let me know if you can't make them. Um, 
The exams will be open notes because I have no control over that because you're wherever you are, but you must work by yourself. Parts of the exams will be randomized. And if I notice that it looks like people are working together, I will act. I will file academic warnings about academic dishonesty, and I will make changes to how we do exams. Probably make it so everyone must be live in Zoom. Um, don't work together on exams. I don't care if you work together on labs and homework. OK, that's exams. Any questions there? Uh, like it's not necessarily about the exams, but more of like the like days before the exams. Like, are you gonna like are you thinking about doing like pre exam like prep or whatever? Yeah. Like, so class, um, like... here, let me open the syllabus real fast, which I probably should have already had open. Um, so what it's gonna be is like Monday, Wednesday, Friday lecture, Monday, Wednesday, Friday lecture, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? And then chapter four is a little bit longer, but I'm gonna have one day of class, the Wednesday before the exam, where I'm gonna go through last semester's exam and, it's, and then um, give hints for it and then the exam. And then for the next one, we have two days of review and then the exam. So I always work in some review days. All righty, gotcha, thanks. And what it will be, as I said, except for the chapter one and chapter four, it'll be lecture one day, lecture the other day, practice problems. And the practice problems are almost all old exam problems. Well, I'll talk about the exams then too. Friday would normally be practice problems, just not for chapter one and chapter four, it's gonna be a Monday instead because chapter four is long. All right, I got you. Now, the last bit is labs. How labs are going to work is I set labs to, to be due at 3 p.m. Thursday. I also set labs to open at 3 p.m. Thursday. And here's the general idea. These labs should be in person. They should be a thing that you're in a room and you do. But life sucks and that's not happening. So. Instead, I took all of my labs that are normally the in-person ones and I moved them to online. I went into Evenden and I performed the lab all by myself, filmed it and recorded it and posted the video. Each week on 3 p.m. on Thursday, a lab will open. Your first lab will open this Thursday, February 2nd at 3. And it is due 3 p.m. the following Thursday. So next week on the 11th, you, lab one is due and lab two will open. And so every, every week you have, at all times there is a lab you can be working, well, at all times after this Thursday, you have a lab you can be working on. Uh, when you go into the labs, It'll have this long background section explaining exactly what's going on and any equations. It'll have a procedure. The procedure will tell you exactly what you need to do. It'll have sparks for data tables that you fill out, places to upload certain files, places to answer certain questions. And the first lab is a little weird with the questions. I'll talk about that when I talk about the first lab. And a place for a conclusion. Um, of note, um, most questions often have two different ways to enter it, either a text box or an upload. This is you could either just type the answer in, or you could do your work on paper and upload a picture of your work. I normally recommend the latter, uploading a picture of your work, because I grade on partial credit. Each week, there will also be displayed a PowerPoint presentation and a video. The video is probably the most crucial part. What I recommend is you read through the PowerPoint, which is just kind of the su summary of what the lab is, then watch the video. The video is me performing the experiment and is often the source of your data. You're going to have to fill in this data table for lab one, and there is no data in it. That's going to come from watching the video and extracting data from the video. So you watch the video, you put it in, and then you answer it all. Once again, they'll do it 3 p.m. on Thursdays. 
of note, I made my office hours um, straddle that. That my office hours are two to three thirty on sorry two to three thirty on Thursdays. So if you save it for the last minute, I'm in office hours to help you. Or if you want to start it right away when it opens, I'm in office hours. I can help you. Um, for each lab, you got to do a whole bunch of stuff. Just fill out each section, fill out each box. Fill out each box, you'll get it. There'll be a conclusion. There'll be post lab questions. There'll be graphs. And I'll say a lot of them will be have graphs. Um, graphs will need to be made in a online program. This says right here must be done using Excel. It doesn't need to be using Excel, but a computer program. Um, I recommend Excel or Google Sheets. Um, if you want to use some other program, you are more than welcome to use any other program, but I will not guarantee I can tell you how to do everything in all other programs. Um, if you are using Excel or Google Sheets, how to make a graph is down at the bottom of Anko Hall. There is a thing on how to make a graph in Excel, complete with video, and how to make a lab and graph in Google Sheets, complete with video. Watch the videos, they can help. There's also a big picture up here that's a screenshot from inside the room if when we had lab that has some of the steps and some of the information you need to keep track of for making graphs that if you click it becomes big. Very big. Um, most of the lab conclusions will ask for a source of error. Um, I will state right now for source of error, I do not accept math error. If you say the reason those error is because I messed up my math, I mean, it might be true, but if that's the reasoning, fix your math. Sources of error should be physical things that happen that were going on. It's kind of hard to do sources of error when you're not doing the lab yourself and watching videos of me doing it, but do your best. I'll be a little lenient there because we're online. Now, since the labs require graphs so much, I'm actually going to talk about graphs for a bit today and actually for a good, what are we, halfway through class? Good, good hunk of the time we have left today, I'm going to talk about graphs. The reason for graphs is a way to extract information from multiple data points. The more data points you have, the, more, the less likely you are to notice errors. And a graph is just a way to collect that. Most of the labs have graphs, a good two thirds, I would say. The whole first lab, I mean, the first lab, which is gonna open this Thursday, we're not gonna have yet covered any of the physics equations. It's really about making a graph. I knew about the ideal gas law, but I just like, you don't have to worry about it too much. I just want it for use of making the equation. I will not accept handmade graphs. You have to do your graphs in Excel, Google Sheets, or something else. And then what you do is you'll take a screenshot or download it or something like that and just upload it in the Upload Your Graph Here section. Um, I'm going to state now, uh, Excel, I think, is easier to use than Google Sheets. If you do not have Excel because, you know, it costs money, um, fun fact, Excel is free for students. I highly recommend getting it just because you can, that if you do not have Microsoft Office, it is free as long as you're a student. And once you graduate, it's like 90 bucks again. So if you're a student, get it because you can, and it doesn't delete from its computer when you're no longer a student. So for your own sanity. In general though, graphing. The point of a graph is a way to analyze data. All graphs have to be in such a way that all the information can be understood and figured out just by looking at it. Everything must be labeled and clear. And when I ask for a graph, this is gonna be the setup. I'm always gonna ask you to graph something versus something else. And it'll always be Y versus X. Um, I'm gonna state right now, uh, this. PowerPoint is online. This video is going online once we finish it, but also um, all this information will be in these graphing tutorials. 
but a lot of the information is also in this picture I already referenced at the top right on the page. You always be graphing y versus x. And but I won't normally say graph y versus x. I'll say something like graph f versus a, which is lab, I want to say full. And I'll say graph f versus a. Well, if I say graph f versus a, what that means is f is y, a is x. Where y Do, 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 do. There it is. Well, y is your vertical axis and x is your horizontal. It'll always be y, x, like so. And so if I say f versus a, that means this guy, your f goes here, your a goes there. Whatever's first is y, whatever's second is always x. Now, when you want to graph, what you're going to do is you're going to take the information you need, and you really don't, you don't need to put all the data, like, oops, virtual. If I, you have all of this data, all these numbers filled in, you don't need all of it. You just need what you're graphing. Take whatever you're graphing and enter the data in Excel, Google Sheets, or whatever you're using. I recommend always putting your X in the first column and your Y in the second. So if I'm graphing f versus a, I put all my a values, then all my f values. And what you do is you select the data and create a scatter plot. How to do that will depend on what program you're using. So I'm not going to cover that here. It's in those other videos I mentioned. But you always want to create a scatter plot without the points connected. When you do so, it should look something like this. Now, a few things about graphs. First off, you must label your axes. Your axes must have a symbol representing what you're graphed or a word. I said F versus A. There's no need to know this yet. We haven't covered it yet, but F stands for force, A is acceleration. I also accept force and acceleration, like you can use words, but you must always put a label saying what the thing you're doing is and what the units are, where the units should be in parentheses. Also, always make sure your data is correct. Make sure your F is on the Y and your A is on the X in this case. Make sure you don't flip your data. Even if you label it correct, make sure the data is correct. I recommend looking at the points. Well, I'll say F is from 0.04 to 0.06. A is from 0.014 to 0.023. Make sure that matches the data you had. The thing is, if, oh, if it's backwards, fix it. The thing is, this is pretty useless. You can look at this and be like, cool, we got dots in a line. Purpose of the graph is to extract information. And looking at this, you don't see any information. You will always need, with one exception, what is called a trend line. How to add a trend line is different between Google Sheets and Excel. In Excel, it involves right-clicking the data point. In Google Sheets, it's a thing. Watch the video. But you want to always get a trend line, and you want to include the equation. This equation, that is what's important. That is what we care about. That is what we want. Because that is what this data really means. Question is, what the hell does that equation mean? And here's the idea. For any straight line, the equation for a straight line is y equals mx plus b. It is y is the slope times x plus the y-intercept. Now, in this case, this data says y equals 2.6567x plus 0 0.0015. But I already said we're graphing f versus a. My f is y. My x is a. So instead of y equals mx plus b, I can say f equals ma plus b. And I can match it to this. This is saying that my value of f, oops, there's a mild mistake here. I don't know if I can actually fix it here. So I want to see if I can fix something. No, oh, it's an equation. There's a small mistake in there, but um, I 
these units had a mistake. I changed this recently and I forgot to fix that. I'll explain that what I did there in a second. Um, oh no, no, it's not. There was no mistake. I'm crazy. Sorry, that's all on me. I was crazy. What's going to happen is um, we're going to say that th that's the two equations. The y equals mx plus b and the y equals you know, f equals the slope times a plus b. And I can say that my value for f is 2.6567 times a plus 0 0.0015, matching the equations. Of note, these numbers do have units. Um, I'm going to normally ask for the slope. The units of the slope is the units on y divided by the units on x. So this would be kg m divided by s squared divided by m divided by s squared, giving you kg. The reason this is important is we're going to compare this to a physical equation. In this class, we will eventually will cover something called Hooke's law. Hooke's law says f. E Sorry, I take that back. I changed this PowerPoint like a month ago from this equation, from a different equation. It used to be Hooke's law. This is Newton's second law. I misspoke. I apologize. There was a law we're going to cover in chapter four called Newton's second law. Newton's second law says F equals MA. When we do graphs in this class, we are always going to ignore the y-intercept. So if I say F equals 2.6567 kg times a plus this number, we're always just going to ignore this number. It's not going to enter into our calculations. It was mostly zero anyways. So I can say f equals 2.6567a. But Newton's second law says f equals ma. Well, if I compare these two, I can say if f equals ma and f equals 2.6567 kilograms a, M must be 2.6567, and that's going to be the goal. Every lab with a graph, you're going to use the graph to get the slope. And once you have the slope, we're going to take that slope, and we're going to compare it to a set equation, like P equals slope T over V, P equals NK T, T over V, to get an equation for a physical constant. You're going to use the slope. From your graph, you're going to get the graph, get the, use the graph to get the slope, and from the slope, use that to find a physical term. Does that make sense? Despite my mess ups? Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm going to talk about graphs. A few minor last minute syllabus bullshit things before I do a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of something else. Um, we are going to be on Zoom. Um, I want on the record that if you have your camera on, I won't even notice. I keep my video pinged because whatever my, I'm recording this for YouTube and whatever I record is what's on this screen. So I keep my video pinned so that you could, people watching this on YouTube always see me. Um, so I don't care if your video is on or off. Makes no difference to me. Just don't be an ass on it. Um, I ask that during lecture, which you're all doing, that you basically keep yourself muted except when you want to talk. Unmute yourself whenever the hell you want. Talk to me whenever you want to talk to me. But I do say mute yourself if you're not talking to me, just because background noise. Like, I don't want to hear, you know, your roommates fighting in the distance. Um, please, though, get involved as much as you want and can. I would prefer class to be more interactive because otherwise it is boring just listening to me lecture. I've already said. Lectures are posted on Vanco Hall as well as YouTube. Um, I do recommend you take notes anyways. The process of taking notes is helpful, although you can always go back and rewatch the lectures because they are on YouTube. Um, if you are taking notes in the live lecture and I'm going too fast, let me know. I will try to slow down. If you're taking notes and you're watching the YouTube video and I'm going too fast, pause the YouTube video. It's a video. But yeah, feel free to tell me I'm going too fast or to repeat things or. These lectures are made in mind of doing in person, and I'm used to having to stop and talk other things. So feel free to ask questions and talk to me. OK, that's the syllabus stuff. We got 10 minutes left, but I'm, so I'm going to cover a little more. But any questions about 
that jazz? Mm, none for me. Well, okay. So if no one else and none from him, so we're good. So, physics, you're in it. What the hell are you getting yourselves in, into? It actually comes from the Greek word fusis, meaning nature or natural things. What physics is, is the study of the world around you in terms of quantifying it and laws. We're basically going to look at our surroundings and look at things going through the air and moving, and we're going to turn them into math. We're going to look at ideas like speed, time, weight, force, and measurements of those various things, and link them to various laws like F equals MA in order to try to explain how the world works. We're going to use this to be able to make various predictions on how things will work to design and create. And so the general idea is I'm going, OK, physics is broken into multiple topics. This class is physics one. This is mechanics and a little bit of thermodynamics. We are going to do physical moving. I'm going to be taking things and moving them around. Um, this is normally a very demonstration based class, and I, you would see me playing with toys. Instead, you're going to be watching videos of me playing with toys that I'm going to have in the window because online sucks. Um, but it's all going to be about the various idea of, of things moving around and how they go and how they interact and what happens when one hits the other and so on. That's our goal, to look at how the world interacts. Now, if we were in person at this point, I would normally ask what everyone's various majors are, because I'm always curious. Um, but I'm not going to really bother with that online. But the ma vast majority of you are probably architecture and me mechatronics. I have to double, I would double check that after, but majority. There's probably a few vets and a few general studies. My general idea is to try to explain how things work and why they work the way they do. And that being said, I'm going to be covering things like why do things fall? What is speed? Like, what does it actually mean? Why do things float? When you throw a football, why do you want to throw a spiral and have it spinning versus just moving through the air without spinning? Sorry, I hit the mic. That's the type of stuff we're going to be covering. That being said, if you want to know how something works and it seems related, feel free to ask. If I know the answer, I'll tell you. If I don't know the answer, I'll probably get, be very honest about it, make an educated guess, but I'll let you know I'm doing so, and get back to you after I look it up. But we are going to try to cover how things work, how the world works, and how we can bend it all to our will. Now, I do admit, I. I like to think that I am very good at lecturing, but I mean, no one likes listening to lectures. Lectures are boring. We know this. You're, I will give as much information as I can. I will keep it as interesting as I can. I will sometimes to my own pain and un discomfort, although less of that because I'm just watching videos of me holding myself, not actually doing it. Um, but you won't always get everything just from listening to lecture. The best way to learn is to practice doing. Hence the homework. But if, but I do recommend studying on your own outside class to make sure you understand. Now, this does bring us to the beginning of chapter one, which is introduction and mathematical concept. And I'm going to be honest. Week one, we're not doing any physics. We're just making sure everyone's on the same page for the stuff you need to do physics. Physics starts chapter two. But what we're going to talk about is what exactly this means. You see, everything we're going to talk about is based off the laws of physics. And all things will follow these strict physical laws. But what a physical law is, is us linking math and the world. We are imposing our math on nature. That is what math is. The general, I mean, this is algebra-based, but calculus was created to try to comprehend velocity and acceleration. It is how it started. And so we are going to be doing a lot of math in this class. This is a algebra-based physics course. And I'm going to give you equations like that one right there. This is called a kinematics equation. 
And I'm often going to say stuff like, okay, here's some numbers, solve for x. But I often, sorry, this is from an old semester and I forgot to take it out. Ignore that. I'm often going to say things like solve for v naught. And I'm going to expect you to be able to rearrange this equation to solve for v naught, often without numbers. I assume you have an algebra backing. That's why it's a prereq. Um, on your first lab, most of the po on every other lab but the first one, the post lab questions are about um, what should we call it? Uh, about about the lab itself. Your first lab has very different post lab questions. The post lab questions from the first lab is just rearranging mathematical equations. It's just going to be things like. Given that t equals this, the omega equals that, solve for t in terms of omega and pi, right? Like it's just going to be rearranging equations. All of these are equations that we are going to see throughout this semester. But I do expect you have the algebra skills to be able to do this. The reason is, is because you need it to understand physics. So, um, you know, instead of just doing that, I'm just going to. Ah. Uh, yep. We're not reviewing tomorrow. Uh, if we were in person, I'd have lab on Tuesday. So, so I expect you to be able to do that. Now, that doesn't mean you're all necessarily comfortable with the math. That's okay. If you're stuck on the math, come get help. I will also help in the, with math. And if you don't want to come get help from me, I'm scary and very excitable and just all around annoying. Don't, you don't need to get help from me. You can go to the math center. Um, the math center, it says I'll get information when I get it. I recently did get the information. The math center can also help with this class. And you can get tutoring from them with the physics, not just the math, but the physics involved if you sign up. And the information is right here on Banco Hall. Okay. Sorry, I'm thinking for a second. I got three minutes. Yeah, I'll go a tiny bit more. I got three minutes. Okay, so let's actually get into it. Some of the math involved. You are probably familiar with the idea of an exponential number, right? An exponential number is just a number multiplied by itself. Two to the second is two times two. 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2. 2 to the fifth is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. This is going to be really crucial with the number 10. 10 to the second is 10 times 10. 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10, 10. That would sound weird. 10 to the fifth is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. But 10 to any power because of that is a 1 with that many zeros. 10 to the third is a one, then three zeros. 10 to the eighth is a one, then eight zeros. 10 to the ninth is a one, then nine zeros. If you instead raise something to a negative exponent, a negative exponent means you're multiplying the reciprocal together that many times. Um, for example, three to the negative fifth well, 3 to the 5th is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 to the negative 5th is just 1 third times 1 third times 1 third times 1 third times 1 third. But just like before, we only care about 10s. 10 to a negative exponent is going to be a small number where the 1 is shifted that many digits over as far as the exponent. 10 to the negative 2 is 0 0.01. 10 to the negative 5th is 0 0.00001. That many spots over. And so you go 10 to a positive exponent. You'll get a 1 with that many zeros. And 10 to a negative exponent, you'll get your 1 shifted over that many decimals. The reason I'm caring about this is we will use to talk this a lot. This is going to come up a lot to talk about some unwieldy numbers. 
take, for example, the radius of a hydrogen atom, which is 0 0.00000000053 meters. Or maybe something called Avogadro's number, which we'll cover, which is 6020000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000